It's been five years since the Me Too movement shook Hollywood to its core. Though it began in the U.S. film industry, it started a worldwide conversation about sexism, misogyny, and sexual harassment. So to talk about how things have changed, France 24 shows about women and culture joined up for this special edition. We're looking at the legacy of Me Too, a hashtag that started a revolution. There's a 21% pay difference between men and women. Women of the world want to see themselves on film. It was all talk before, but there's actual accountability now. I think it is um, starting to think about changing. Weinstein's a monster. He's a horrible man. Something has cracked wide open. Joining us in the studio is French film producer Vanessa Jean and Variety Magazine's senior international film editor Elsa Keslassi. On Skype, we have Glamour UK's Lucy Morgan from London and Dr. Caroline Heldman from Los Angeles, who was part of our 2018 documentary about women in Hollywood that we made six months after Me Too began. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. In a sentence, what does Me Too mean to you? We'll start with you, Caroline. Me Too was a moment where millions of women around the globe felt comfortable coming forward and sharing their stories of sexual violence. Even though it's been going on forever, this was our moment. Elsa. For me, it was a social and political revolution that has changed the way we relate to each other and the way we perceive the world. Lucy. For me, the movement is all about sisterhood, community, and holding space for one another as survivors of sexual violence. Vanessa. For me, it has been an earthquake when it happened, and it became a tsunami with a lot of waves that are still um, acting to today. Okay, well, triggered by um, the Harvey Weinstein scandal, Me Too became a household hashtag when actress Elisa Milano encouraged women who'd been sexually assaulted to write Me Too as a status on Twitter. Let's take a look back. Explosive stories broken by the New York Times and New Yorker magazine within days of each other. A number of women in the United States speaking out for the very first time, accusing Harvey Weinstein, one of the world's most prominent film producers, of harassment and sexual assault. Days later, American actress Alyssa Milano asked her Twitter followers to respond with Me Too if they'd also experienced sexual harassment. That single tweet opened up the floodgates around the world. From LA to New York, Paris and beyond, women began to share their own experiences on social media. In France, Balance ton port, or the squeal on your pig movement started to gain traction. I'll be very happy if it means some victims are able to move forward and if society moves forward and there are new laws. During the Golden Globes in 2018, media mogul Oprah Winfrey praised the women in show business who were speaking out. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. But not everyone was on the same page. One of France's most well-known actresses, Catherine Deneuve, was one of a hundred prominent women who penned an op-ed in the French daily Le Monde, denouncing the movement as a puritanical witch hunt. Scared to approach women the letter opened up a debate, exposing a cultural and generational divide. But Catherine Deneuve, she's a fellow actress. Do you, not, you don't it. think much of what Catherine Deneuve had to say? If you, you can't tell the difference between sexual harassment and somebody lightly flirting, then there's, the problem is in your head. In France, 31-year-old actress Adèle Enel became the poster girl for Me Too when she walked out of the February 2020 César Awards ceremony in protest that convicted sex offender Roman Polanski being awarded Best Director. Back in the United States and five years on from those initial Weinstein bombshell revelations, the disgraced movie producer is serving a 23-year sentence for assaulting two women and he's back in court facing charges involving five other women. Actor Danny Masterson, director Paul Haggis and actor Kevin Spacey also face separate trials. 
other big names like R. Kelly are being held accountable now. So, Elsa, do you think that the cycle of abuse uh, by powerful men has been broken? I would say that not everywhere, but certainly in, in the U.S., I think that there is a big, big awareness now about this kind of behavior. Um, and it's not tolerated anymore in the UK also. Uh, unfortunately, some places like France, for instance, it hasn't changed much. Uh, but I would say that certainly in the US, that, that cycle has been broken. And Lucy was an African-American activist, Tarana Burke, who coined the phrase Me Too in 2006. But it only became a household hashtag when famous women, mostly white, started using it. Um, do you think there's a racial divide when it comes to Me Too? I don't think there's a racial divide as such. I think the Me Too movement has to honour its origins, which is in community organising by Tarana Burke. She's an incredible woman and she's a survivor of sexual violence herself. She herself has said that it's not so much about a divide, it's about how, um, I guess, the society we're operating in treats survivors. So I know that there's been an accusation that white women co-opted the movement, and to an extent that's true, but it's also the fact that in this society we live in, white women are more likely to be rewarded for talking about this kind of thing rather than say the young girls Tirana was originally helping 12, 11 year olds in the USA who being abused by their mum's boyfriends. Um, we're much, we much prefer a story about Alyssa Milano rather than those girls in, in the USA or, or anywhere in the world. So to move on a bit, Caroline, back in 2018, when we last spoke to you in L.A., you talked about one of the main problems being that the whole system indeed is run by white men. Take a listen. I think the way that women are represented on screen uh, is inherently linked to the fact that hiring practices in Hollywood look like, look like the 1950s, right? Um, so you have very few women behind the camera in key uh, decision-making roles. Only 7% of directors of the top films are, are female. Um, you have very few editors, writers. So the people making the decisions behind the scenes are overwhelmingly men and they're overwhelmingly white men. Caroline, you said Hollywood wouldn't and couldn't change overnight. Five years on, has anything changed? Well, there's certainly some mechanisms of accountability in place, but I would say overall, you know, maybe this is a drastic take, but the Me Too movement uh, is, is a failed movement in the sense that social movements to be effective uh, need to first raise awareness, which it has done, but second, put in mechanisms of accountability, whether it's in Hollywood, whether it's public policy, and at the end of the day, that second goal has not been met and the movement has lost steam. So I look at metrics like the fact that only one person of rapists will ever see a day inside a jail cell. And in Hollywood in particular, we haven't seen dramatic shifts in terms of who's running things behind the scene. So it is no, um, no mystery that in a recent survey done by women in film that 69% of women in the industry say that they've experienced sexual harassment or sexual violence in the last couple of years. So uh, not to be too much of a pessimist, but, but the movement raised awareness. It didn't really shift the culture. Caroline, to tail end uh, off of what you said about not being too uh, pessimistic, some do say that the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial uh, marked a turning point in the Me Too movement, a rather negative turning point. What precedent do you think it set, Lucy? I think it set an appalling precedent for survivors. If you're looking at what Amber Heard was sued for, it was saying that she was a public figure who had come to represent domestic abuse. In that sentence, she was coming forward as a survivor, as a victim of domestic abuse. And what happened to her, she was subject to a targeted hate campaign in which she was accused of, of many other things, defecating on her own bed, of doing drugs in court. What she received was just unthinkable. If you think about the women in your life who have come forward to you and said, I'm a survivor of sexual violence, if you think of them going through what she went through, it's, it's absolutely terrifying. Well, let's move on to maybe some of the positive things that have um, come out. One positive thing about Me Too is it ignited conversations on how the well-being of actresses on set could be better protected and demand for intimacy um, coordinators skyrocketed. Monia Ait El Hajj is the first person to take on such a role here in France. Let's hear from her. Actors are particularly vulnerable when they're involved in intimate or nude scenes. I always say it's just like being a stunt person. 
It's impossible nowadays to film a stunt scene without having a stunt coordinator. So this is the same thing. People can get hurt physically, emotionally or psychologically if scenes of intimacy don't go well. So it makes sense to have someone who handles the choreography, makes sure everyone is safe, informs them and makes sure everyone's voice is heard. Certainly an interesting job. Vanessa, you're a producer here in, in France. You've worked with Clint Eastwood and Christopher Nolan. There are hundreds, hundreds of intimacy coordinators in the US. What's the situation like here in France? In France, you have a counselor on set, um, thanks to 50-50, the movement that is born from uh, the Me Too movement. Uh, on set, on screen, you have to have 50% of men and 50% of women. On each set, you have to have someone, référent, that you can go to when you're working on a set to explain if something is happening. So despite uh, some of those positive uh, changes that you mentioned there, Vanessa, uh, last year, French female directors won the top prizes both at Cannes and the Venice Film Festivals. And still, if we take a look at a recent cover of France's film industry magazine, we see seven men in the industry under the title Objective Reconquest. Uh, maybe for you, Elsa, how is it possible that they're still not getting it? I think they perfectly understand what's happening in the world and they decide to just ignore it. So it's more like almost a, a rebellion from, I mean, for me, that's the way provocation, I perceive it. Provocation, maybe. It's provocation. It's like, you know, we're in France and we don't care about your uh, rules, like we don't care. They see it, I mean, they see Me Too as like a U.S. imperialism coming to them and they're rejecting it. And to me, this cover is completely uh, un on purpose. I am not totally agree. I mean, five years ago, nobody would say something. And everybody said, what is happening? What does that mean? It's not the cinema. There is women, there is white, there is um, Arabic people, there is uh, black people. It's not the French cinema. And I think the problem is um, that they didn't see the problem. Because I think when you are a male, a white uh, in the industry, you don't see that it's missing women. I worked on shooting and suddenly I was the only woman. And I had to tell all the guys and say, Is there, you don't see the problem here? And they were, no, we don't see. And I was just, okay, I'm the only woman. And when I said to them, say, oh, yes, you're right, that's not normal. Caroline, I'm sure you heard about it at the time. In 2018, the French actress Catherine Deneuve defended men's right to chat up women. Um, has she got a point, do you think? Uh, I don't think she has a point uh, in the sense that she is, you know, pushing back I and mean, essentially pushing back against women who are coming forward about sexual harassment and sexual violence. And the very, the most important thing we can do is actually believe women. Uh, at the end of the day, according to FBI statistics, uh, nine out of 10 times uh, they are telling the truth. We treat this crime differently than any other crime. We put the victim on trial. We don't believe her. Sometimes it's a hem. Uh, um, but by and large, this is a, a gendered crime, right, which disproportionately affects women. And so it's dis... Uh, heartening to see women come out and kind of throw other women, uh, you know, under the bus during a moment when we are finally finding our voice. And I couldn't agree more with the panelists that perhaps the biggest uh, positive from the Me Too movement is that more women are finding their voice. And I would argue, you know, that even what's happening in Iran right now um, has to do with this new kind of global confidence that women have. Nearly out of time, unfortunately. I just want to ask you all, I'm starting with you, Lucy. Uh, how do you see the future? So I want to finish with um, a quote from Tarana Burke, who said that Me Too is not a movement to take down powerful men. It's a movement for survivors. Um, I take a lot of comfort from that sentiment. There are women across the world who know at this point there is simply no justice for us as survivors as long as the systems that enabled our abuse are still in place. Um, and it actually, the only bit of solace I get is, is the thought of women speaking their truth and society having a place for them to hear their stories, their voices, and for those people to be believed. Caroline, what about you? How do you see the future? I see the future as a continuation of what the Me Too movement has inspired, which is a lot of women running for public office. Um, I think the public outcry in response to the overturn of abortion rights in America um, has, again, uh, you know, just really amped up women who it's become very clear uh, that we simply 
uh, matter less in a society, and certainly women of color, older women, queer women, fat women, a lot of mar already otherwise marginalized women uh, have known this uh, for a long time, but we are coming together uh, and we are not taking it because you can't treat half your population uh, as though they are second-class citizens and expect them to not rise up. Elsa. Well, the future in France for the Me Too movement is not so bright because as you probably know, the president of the National Film Board, who's the most powerful man in the French film industry, has just been named for a second term uh, by the French government, even though he's been accused of sexual assault and he's facing trial. So I think that uh, mentalities have changed, but uh, in practical terms, uh, it's really the same. So we need a, a bigger revolution to happen uh, because it's just people are asleep. Yes, we, we need to still be wake up, really wake up, awaking yeah. everyone and fighting. Yeah. Finish then with a little bit of optimism and pessimism, realistic <laughs> pessimism. That's unfortunately well, all we have time for. Thank you very much to our guests here in the studio, Vanessa John and Elsa Keslasi, of course, to Lucy Morgan from London and Dr. Caroline Heldman in Los Angeles as well. We're going to play out with a clip from the new film She Said, Kerry Mulligan and Zoe Kazan star as reporters Megan Toohey and Jody Cantor, the New York Times journalists who exposed Harvey Weinstein. Thank you very much for joining us. There's more on our website and social media. Thanks for watching. See you next time. The only way these women are going to go on the record is if they all jump together. We're all here, Harvey. Who have you talked to? I have three daughters, and I don't want them to ever accept abuse or bullying. I'll go on the record. Go right. It's time to write. This is all going to come up. I was silenced. I want my voice back.